Well, he got me hooked. Look who's here, Omega Man, Kenny Omega, into the Coors side seats. <laughs> Hello, great uh, to be here. Um, what do you want people to take away from this documentary? Wow, that's a good question. I mean, I just hope at the end of the day that they're entertained and maybe they open their mind to professional wrestling, uh, if they aren't fans, of course. Uh, so that would be people like me, <laughs> for example. I'm not a fan anymore, uh, so I try to take I try to take that side of pro wrestling where let's make it universally entertaining for everyone and tell you know, deeper stories than what we're used to seeing on television in the year 2019. So um, if, if a person who's never watched wrestling or fell out of love with wrestling watches this documentary and finds it exciting or just takes something interesting away from it, I'm happy. And speaking of uh, including more people, you were part of a tag team called the Golden Lovers. Yes, sir. Can you can you explain the concept of the tag team to, to people who don't know? Yeah. Okay. So um, back in Canada and in the American Indies, I was just a real athletic dude doing professional wrestling, and I never felt that there were uh, there was anyone active on the scene that was quite like me, until I saw this video, a DVD of this guy named Kota Ibushi. And as soon as I saw the video of this guy, I was inspired and I felt, I have to meet this guy, I have to work with this guy, and I feel that we can do something very special and something very unique together that no one has ever seen before. So I had the chance to go there and, and wrestle him. And uh, At first we were rivals, so we, we fought against each other and then we developed a real life friendship. And um, I was just supposed to be a one and done guy, go to Japan for one trip and I'll never be seen ever again. I thought I could retire happily and that would be my wrestling career. Right. But um, you know, we developed this, this relationship and there's supposed to be two matches and we said, you know, let's, let's throw away that second match. Let's just become a tag team. Let's, let's really do something new and cool because when we were doing it in 2010, 11, there wasn't really much in the way of tag team stuff and we just wanted to reinvent the entire concept of two guys working together in the ring. And so we traveled up and down the strip. We, we were lent out to various promotions in Japan. We did crossover stuff in the United States. And uh, yeah, just through that is just a, this really, it's just a very special camaraderie. And it, you know, we, we kind of went our separate ways, came back together and it's just a 10 year long story that I think is 10 year, eight year, no 10 year, 10 year long story that um, is depicted in this, this documentary. So you said you went over, thought you were gonna have one match, that turned into a 12 year career in Japan. Mm -hmm. Had you not gone there, mm -hmm. how different would uh, your career look right now? It'd be over, <laughs> it'd, it'd be ball game. I don't know yeah. what I'd be doing. I mean, I, I, I was at a crossroads at one point and I was really into mixed martial arts. I was, I was competing in uh, Jiu Jitsu locally and within Manitoba. And uh, I really enjoyed it, but there was something, I felt that there was something inside of me that still wanted to be a performer. So even when I was competing in jiu-jitsu and when I was sparring, I wanted to be entertaining. I wanted to put on a show for everyone. I hated winning by points in my matches. I hated when, um, you know, I felt that matches were boring. So uh, I thought I'd give it one more kick at the can. And uh, just when I went out for what well, was supposed to be my farewell tour in the United States, I got scouted and went to Japan for my first trip. And again, the, the documentary kind of covers a lot of that. Um, but yeah. And now you're back in North America. Yeah, so I mean, things have come full circle. So I w had this super long career in Japan. Uh, again, I, th I thought I, at first I was gonna be in Japan for one month mm -hmm. and then that turned into over 10 years. And then I had thought, okay, I'm gonna end my career in Japan, but now there's this whole new big opportunity with AEW wrestling and um, I'm taking my craft and my unique style of wrestling to North America again, and I'm really excited about that too. And you've had the opportunity to join the WWE. You haven't done so. Yeah. Why? Uh, uh, you know, there's this, I actually, well, I had a small little stint in WWE and their farming system, and uh, it was called Deep South Wrestling. Right now, current day fans would probably relate to that as NXT. Right. And, um, you know, it just wasn't for me. I learned a lot. There was a lot of things that helped me take the next step after I left WWE. But um, I had always felt that when I had full creative control over my own person and my own ideas, that I could really, um, I could be the true me and the real me and show my full potential. Uh, so you're are, saying they wouldn't, you don't believe that they would have allowed you to do that? Uh, at that stage of my career, probably right. not. So, um, I mean, 10 years later, 12 years later, 
maybe, yeah, you know, now would be a good time. So I was actually heavily considering going there uh, earlier in the year. But, you know, AEW, of course, this new promotion that we've got going, uh, that just seemed right for me. And uh, I always get really excited at the idea of having full creative control and uh, just doing new things, man. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, sometimes a, there's sometimes a job where you have to really conform to a certain system or you have to perform to a certain standard or in a certain way or people want to manage you and then micromanage you. And this is a situation where, okay, you're going to be part of this multi-million dollar, billion dollar company and we're giving you the ball. So just give us Kenny Omega. And to me, that's exciting as a performer. So I felt that that was probably what was best for me as of right now. Uh, you mentioned Manitoba. You're Canadian. Yes. Uh, are you a Jets fan? Did you remain a Jets fan when you went to Japan? Oh man, you know I was a huge I was a huge Jets fan back in the day, and uh, like <laughs> Timu Solani days. Yes, yeah, we're talking Timu Solani days. Uh, I, I was a, like I don't know if you guys knew, but I played hockey for for a period of time. I was a goaltender, so I, my, I'm I'm Baba Senza's number one fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. nice. He was my favorite. Um, but yeah, like the Jets really came into their own. I thought like the the. The pinnacle when I was a Jets fan was, yeah, when it was Baba Senza, Keith Chuck, and Timu Solani, and, you know, dudes like that. So the new Jets, you know, it's so cool that they're back in the city. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's this brand new unity amongst the people in Winnipeg, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, we're still, we're still going in with the whiteout and all that, and just like that, that team spirit um, that was so prominent back in the day when I was a child is back. And even, like, you know, my parents and... My parents' friends on that, they're, they're in the Winnipeg Jets spirit, so, hey, I'm not playing hockey anymore, but I'm glad that, that the spirit of ice hockey is still alive and well in Winnipeg. I love it. Bob Essen's a fan. Yeah, yeah. great, awesome. great call back. Uh, Kenny, uh, the, the documentary is called Omega Man, A Wrestling Love Story. It is part of our Engraved on a Nation series. We can't thank you enough for joining us today. <laughs> it's my pleasure completely. This thank you very fantastic. much. And best of luck in the new, uh, the new wrestling I'll try series. my best. This will be fantastic.